The final lesson of this module is on security. Uh, this will just be brief coverage. If you're taking this course as part of the master's in data science, you'll have an entire course on security. And if not, some of you may have studied computer security separately. Uh, this lesson will try to expose you quickly to the various types of computer and data science security exploits uh, with some attention to ones that uh, pertain to technologies that have become more common more recently. Uh, and talk about both ways that you can be alert to these in your work. And at the end of this lesson, we'll talk a little bit about the ethics related considerations that data science professionals may want to consider. So speaking of ethics, this is really a different topic than the others that we've considered from an ethical point of view. The reason is that in virtually all cases of security breaches, there's no debate about whether that breach was an ethical thing to do. It wasn't. Uh, the real ethical conversation is how much it is the uh, responsibility of the developer of those data science methods and the software that underlies them to take into consideration the security concerns and hopefully to be able to prevent them versus that being the uh, responsibility of the users or someone else. Uh, and we will discuss that some at the end of this lesson. So first, of course, we need to talk about virtual backgrounds. Uh, in the last lesson, the uh, virtual background was a colorful church. I suspect that uh, at least some of you were able to identify or guess that that church came from Mexico. Uh, it turns out to come from the state of Baja California Sur, the, which is the southern half of that peninsula of Mexico on the western side that extends down from California. Uh, it's actually the small old mining town of El Triunfo, that means the triumph, uh, which uh, is about two hours north of the tip of Baja California Sur, where Cabo San Lucas is located. As for the virtual background today, it seemed appropriate then when we're talking about security that we remind ourselves of security over the course of mankind by having a picture here of an old castle. Uh, I suspect that some of you may be able to uh, know or locate where this castle is, so I won't say where it is now and we'll come back to that at the start of the next lesson. As this background is also meant to remind us, however, Security has been part of humankind almost since the beginning. Uh, in fact, if you look it up, it turns out that the oldest remaining uh, castles date back 5,000 years, located in what now is Syria in the Middle East. Uh, and then the next level of that was walled cities. Those began about 3,000 years ago, also in the Middle Eastern part of the world, and then spread in both directions to Europe and to Asia. Uh, the Great Wall of China is said to have begun about 2,300 years ago. Um, I'll resist the temptation to turn this into more of a history lesson, but it's an absolutely fascinating topic to uh, learn about, and you can easily find the history of castles and walled cities on the internet. So now let's get back to uh, computing data science and the internet. We've already said as perhaps the foundational fact of this whole module that the internet that we use today was not defined with security or privacy in mind. So building on top of that, what are the basic type of causes of security breaches? I'm going to, there are different ways to categorize these, but I'm going to categorize them into three sets. And in each case, give an analogy to physical security, in this particular analogy, a lock on a door. So one case is products that are not designed with sufficient consideration to security. Uh, this you could think of as being analogous to a door lock that is really easy to pick when I was in college, you could simply slide a card in between the lock and the door and get in almost any door. Uh, a second is uh, products that actually are designed better, but people find clever ways to break into them nonetheless. And we'll see some examples of that in this. And you can think of that as a lock that is good, but somebody can still pick that lock. 
And then the third one is that there are good security practices and people simply don't follow them. And disappointingly, an awful lot of breaches come from that. Uh, bad passwords is an example of that. And you can think of this as having the best lock in the world, but you leave your door unlocked. In fact, I could add to that that I mentioned at the in the very first uh, lesson in introducing myself that I spent nine years as the CIO, the Chief Information Officer of the University of Colorado at Boulder. And during that time, uh, we had some cases where sensitive data was potentially exposed. Uh, it turned out in no case did we find out that it ever was, but we had to report it as having been potentially exposed. Uh, and in every single case, the exposure was from something I referred to as stupid human tricks, which simply meant that people hadn't done patches or uh, followed other uh, security practices that they were in fact required to follow. And so, and we'll see that in some of our instances here. So for all of the uh, really clever computer security uh, practices that we can construct and apply, very often it comes down to the analogy of people leaving their front doors unlocked. So it's useful to have some sort of a mental categorization of the uh, types of security exploits that exist. You can find different ways of looking at this in the literature. I'll just use a very simple one and break it into three categories. Uh, the first are what I would call direct break-ins. Uh, the simplest example of that is simply guessing somebody's password. And once you have that, you're in their system and you can uh, do whatever that person could do in their system. Uh, you could probably put phishing exploits in that category too. They're kind of a reverse that uh, you can almost whimsically say, you call up somebody and say, could you please give me your social security number? And they do. Uh, and so you've just directly gotten their information. So those are the direct exploits. Uh, the second are the uh, more sophisticated technical ones. This started with the concept of viruses and now there's other sorts of malware as well. And these usually work in a way that somehow you manage to plant software within a person's computer that then gives you access to all or many parts of their computer so that you can either access their information or actually just utilize their computer as a server so you have kind of free server power. Uh, these are things that, as we know, often get planted in computer through people clicking on web links that are suspicious uh, or should be suspicious. And uh, I think many of us have become attuned to that, but it's still a very important uh, type of break-in. The third are the ones that take down systems in their entirety. And the two most common ones are uh, ways to disable systems or what are called denial of service attacks. So uh, we'll see an example in our reading for this lesson of disabling systems with ransomware. And so this is ways that you, innate, you render certain parts of systems inoperable uh, and then ransom people to uh, get them to operate again. Uh, denial of service is a somewhat different thing, but it also renders a system inoperable generally by flooding it with so much traffic that it can't do the job that it was set out to do. It should also be pointed out as a final part of background for this lesson, that there is two uh, newish computing uh, technologies that have really complicated uh, the possibilities for security issues, the internet of things and cloud computing. Uh, I think you know what both of those are. The internet of things is refers to those generally smaller devices, very often at the edge of the computing network that are web enabled. And these can be anything. They can be your kitchen appliances. They can be the, the vehicles that you drive. They can be medical devices. Uh, very often they're smaller in their, uh, in their storage. And so it's uh, common that there's just not as much ability to build really tight security into them. And then they're often uh, being uh, manufactured and provided with software with people who just may not be experienced as, uh, in, as experienced in computer security techniques. And so we'll see an example of that in our readings uh, in this lesson. Uh, cloud computing is something quite different. Uh, it's at the other end of the spectrum. Uh, these are capabilities that are provided by uh, the most mature of computing companies where your 
both storage and uh, cycles can be provided by that vendor in ways that can scale up and down to meet your needs. There's nothing inherently insecure about cloud computing. In fact, it could even be better if the uh, that vendor is better at security than you may be. But at the least, it's a loss of control. And there definitely are instances of cloud computing leading to vulnerabilities. And we'll see one of those in our examples as well. So for the this lesson, I've given you five brief articles to read that uh, illustrate uh, recent significant computer security problems uh, and uh, illustrate uh, through those various sorts of vulnerabilities. So if you haven't read those already, I would suggest that you pause the video at this, this point, uh, review those articles, and then come back to the video.